e to the sine x is a composite function. So to take its derivative, we're going to need to use the chain rule, which tells us the derivative of a composite function, f of g of x, is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. As long as we can accurately identify the outside and inside function, we'll be able to apply the chain rule no problem. In this case, the outside function that we will call f of x is e to the x. It's e to some power. The inside function, the power of e, which we can call g of x, is simply sine x. So then, what's the derivative of e to the sine x? Well, by the chain rule, we begin with f prime, the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is e to the x, and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. But it's not x that should be in this function, rather it's g of x. We want to leave the inside function unchanged, so it's actually e to the sine x. That's f prime of g of x, the derivative of the outside evaluated at the inside. Then we just multiply by g prime. That's the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is sine x, and sine x's derivative is cosine x, and that's the derivative. So the derivative of e to the sine x by the chain rule is e to the sine x times cosine x. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and check out my Calculus One course and Calculus One exercises playlists in the description for more. I'm a secular and a